Well, when it comes to high-speed internet access, Detroit is amongst the worst connected cities in the country. The lack of investment and inequities becoming painfully obvious amidst the pandemic when kids and adults, of course, forced to rely on the internet for remote or work or school. Sadly, thousands still lack broadband at a time when it's no longer optional. 7 Action News reporter Amira David looks at the digital divide and the collaborative finding ways to solve the inequity from within. Amira. Glenda, the North End Woodward Community Coalition is one part of the collaborative you just mentioned. The group invited me into that historic neighborhood where I saw firsthand the problems, but also the solutions. Rent, water, DTE, gas, getting to and from work, taking my kids to school. The one thing this single mom of four just cannot afford at an extra $50 a month is internet. It's just too much, you know, but Wi-Fi is so needed now. It's, you can't do anything without it. Is it hard making ends meet? Yes, very hard. Chelsea Knight makes 11 60 an hour in a city where 41% of residents make less than $25,000 a year, and a whopping 70% of children live in homes without a wired broadband connection. Challenges with internet affordability and availability behind what experts have coined the digital divide. Digital redlining has been driving the divide for all of these years. Redlining refers to the pattern of installing high-speed internet in wealthier areas while skipping over nearby low-income and minority neighborhoods that were seen as less profitable. AT&T accused of employing the practice in 2017. There was not the investment made to put the fiber in the ground to make those connections. Out of that reality, the Equitable Internet Initiative was born, a collaborative of Detroit community organizations installing neighborhood-governed community wireless networks to tackle the crippling inequity. Pivotal to closing that gap are solar charging stations like this one here at Bennett Park. Residents can come here, park along the perimeter, and get access to the internet from their car for free. And look at this, even charge up their devices. Cars lined up on every corner from around the whole block. Changa Parker, a digital steward of the initiative, installs internet in his own North End community. Everything from parks to homes. If they butt back, it's on. Where neighborhood leaders like Norma Heath are opening up their own properties as a Wi-Fi hotspot. In this case, in her front yard. This location, complete with seating, sees 1,800 internet and power connections a month. And you close it up so you won't get rain and water and all that stuff in there. But the group, funded by grants, is also transforming individual households. So far, hooking up more than 200 homes of the most vulnerable, seniors and families with school-aged kids, including the home of Chelsea Knight. They do their homework online. It's a blessing. It really is a blessing. Leaving community members feeling served and community leaders empowered. How does it make you feel knowing you are part of the solution? It made me feel great. Great. It makes me extremely proud. Proud of what I'm providing for the community and proud of the results. And the work is far from over. With a new $750,000 grant from the Knight Foundation, the Detroit Collaborative will be expanding high-speed internet access in the city's North End Woodward area, which covers parts of Highland Park and Hamtramck as well. If you're interested in learning more or getting involved in some way, we will post a link for you on our webpage, wxyz.com.